PineGrow makes it very easy to customize Bootstrap 4 with SaaS variables. And let's take a look at a simple project together. We can either start a new project or open an existing one. And let's start a new one. Bootstrap 4 and we select a starting page. And then we save it. In Pangro we'll ask if we want to open the project, the folder as a project. We say yes, because this feature requires um, projects. So we can close this tab. And then we say page, customize bootstrap team. And yes, let's do it. Okay, so this is what happened. We look at the project. Pangro created bootstrap underscore team folder that contains bootstrap source files and custom CSCC file that will contain all our modifications, uh, variables and any additional rules that we add to the team. And with bootstrap it's important to remember never to change the original files and to keep all our modifications in a separate file. Otherwise, we will lose the ability to easily update Bootstrap by simply copying new version over the old one. And let's close this tab. And now we go to Style Panel, where everything will happen. Let's go to Style Sheet menu, and here we have all the uh, SAS files. Maybe it looks scary, so many, but we are only interested in two. Custom CSS, that's like the main one, and variables. So let's click on variables to open it in a separate tab. And here we see all the bootstrap variables that are available for customization. Okay, so let's change, uh, let's change the primary color. We find it here, and then we right-click on it, and we choose Customize in Custom CSCC uh, option. And now, we here we see Custom CSS is open, and here Bootstrap, like all the Bootstrap source files are imported, and then on top we have our variables. And you see, we, cast, we choose primary, but because primary's value is using the variable blue, then PineGrow also copied the variable blue, because SAS uh, would not find the variable blue when compiling this style sheet. And if we change the primary color, we see that the changes are immediately reflected on the page. So let's say cancel, and instead we will define a new color, and we click on this insertion line, and then we just type the name of the color, violet, and we press tab, and just put red, and then we can click on this to find the color, something like this. And then here in primary, we can now use our new variable, violet. And this is our new primary color. And how about if we would want to use another of bootstrap colors for our primary value? Again, we go back to variables. And here we can say, okay, let's select pink and we customize in custom so that it is uh, included in this file and then we can use it as a value for another variable. And the order of variables that reference each other is important. PineGrow tries to automatically keep the correct order of variables when we do the customize option. So in this case we can see that the pink was inserted before the primary. Because in the original variables files, that's how they are positioned. 
and this makes it possible for us to actually use pink in primary. If pink would go like at the end, then we would not be able to use it as a value of the preceding variables. And now when we save the page, the compiled boost, bootstrap CSS is also saved on the disk. And we can delete the variables that are not used anymore, for example blue, just click on the trash bin and it's gone. So the variable blue is still in main variables files, but because we don't need to customize it and because our custom variables don't need this value, we don't have to include it in custom file. So let's try to change the fonts. And going through variables, we notice, wow, there are like lots and lots of variables. And we can use a smarter way. So let's activate the search bar. And then we type font. And now like all the variables and all the CSS rules that contain these terms are shown. And here we see we have font family variable. And let's customize it. And let's use Georgia. It's a beautiful system font. And here it is, like the font of our team is changed. But how about using custom fonts? For example, fonts from Google, Google Fonts. It's also easy. And even though Pangro has the Manage Google Fonts uh, tool, for this particular case, it's easier if we go directly to Google Fonts and get all the information we need there. So let's use Lato as our main font. And we go select this font. And here we are interested in the import format. And we just copy the actual import statement without style text. And then in custom, and let's clear the search bar so we see everything. We can go here at the beginning of variables, or maybe here, and we paste the import statement. And now we can use the font name in the variable. And uh, nothing happened yet. And the reason is that the way how CSS handles import statements, basically we have to reload the page, refresh the page, so that a browser will load imported style sheets, in this case the, fam the Lato font. And here we see now the font we are using on the page is Lato, or maybe it's pronounced Lato, not sure. I just call it Lato. And wouldn't it be nice if we could use another font family for headings? But to do that, first we have to figure out which uh, bootstrap variables controls the heading font family. And there is a nice and smart way to do that in PineGrow. So let's select the heading and then we go to Active tab. An active tab shows all the rules, CSS rules, that affect the currently selected element. And uh, active panel also understands SAS. So here we see display 4, font size, line height, H1. Oh, and then here it's easy to spot which variable is used to set the headings font family. And now let's copy it and we go to variables and then we search for it. Here it is. Right click, customize. And now we are in custom and we see these variables and let's switch off the search bar. Here it is. Now we repeat the process, we go to Google Fonts and we find another font which would match this one. 
How about Laura? And I say plus. And here we again copy the import statement and we paste it after the sometimes it's hard to get the on the line. Okay, here it is. And then we can use the font family suggestion that we got from Google Fonts. So this one and copy this into heading font family value. There's one issue with this. We also got styles. Okay, now it's good. And then we have to refresh the page. And there it is. We have Laura for headings and Lato for body text. And we can also change the heading colors. So again, let's go to variables and we search for heading. And here it is, headings color. And we customize it. Let's see everything again. And then we can use our primary color to color our headings on the page. And then what to do when there is no variable to achieve our customization? For example, if we want to add a slight text shadow to H1 heading, there is no variable to do that. But uh, our team, our custom CSS file is just a normal CSS file. So we can add any CSS rule that we need. So let's do that. Okay, H1 is selected. And then in active, we click on the this uh, advanced create button and we select H1 and here custom is already selected destination uh, style sheet and we say create and here it is H1 and then we just go to shadows in visual editor and we add text shadow maybe go down like this and we need a color And we blur it. Okay, not so pretty, but you get the point, right? So whatever rules we need, we can just add them. And if we look at our custom style sheet, now the new rules, they are appended to the style sheet. So this is the structure. First, we have imports for fonts. And then we define all our variables. And then Bootstrap itself is imported. And then after that come any additional CSS, CSS rules that we need. So in this scenario, we used page customized Bootstrap team to let Pingro copy all the Bootstrap SAS files into our project. But what if our project already contains customized SAS files? Then we can simply skip this step and in uh, manage style sheets for our bootstrap CSS, we select use CSS less option. So in this case, it's already used. I'll show you here on this file. So if we press this, then we have the option to tell Pingro where is the source SAS file for this style sheet. So we just do this once, we tell Pingro where source file for our bootstrap CSS or any other CSS file is. And then Pangro will work with SAS versions of these files. And we get all these features like uh, right click on variables to customize it and everything else that we just explored for any other SAS based project, not only for bootstrap. So that's it. For now, hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play around with bootstrap variables. I just have to show you one more, which is nice and most people don't know it's there. There are a couple of like um, global switches and one of them is gradients. So let's customize the gradient 
and we turn it to true. And then all the buttons, they got a slight gradient into them. They're not flat color anymore. So this one is also useful sometimes. So hope that you will enjoy playing around with Bootstrap and Pinegrow. And we are always working on making these tools even easier to use. So keep in touch. Bye-bye.